Welcome to St. Joseph's Catholic Church in Neutral Bay. We're in organs being installed and I, the interviewer and the lead in this project. And I'm asking the organist, Pastor, about the organ so that we can understand what, how it works. So how does it work, Pastor? Well, we've been through the uh, previous episodes where we had the mechanics inside and I mentioned about a watch face which you can see the outside but you don't know what's inside but now we know what's inside let's see at the control desk so this organ here has uh, stops and it has how does it work pastor well when I draw a stop it actually moves a mechanism inside. So the pipes are sitting on a chest and underneath that's what's called a slider. And that means when I draw the stop, the slider is put into place so the holes in that coincide with the pipe. So when I play a note, it sounds. So if you see what I'm doing now, we hear nothing because the sliders are stopped. Now, I'll unstop them. here the quintadina which is a flute and it's got eight which means it's of unison pitch okay thank you we've gone through the first one the quintadina what's next well we've got the octave above that flöte, or in german for flute so i'll let you hear that on its own which is an octave higher than this okay yep and you can combine them and underneath that octave two, which plays an octave above all that. So I've come to the other side of the organ, on the right hand side. What is happening here? We have Hauptwerk, which is the chief division and those pipes are actually in the front behind the facade. Now we'll go down here to get a foundation. We've got a Holzgedacht, the stopped wooden flute here, and it's a unison pitch that sounds like this. So what's next here? Well, we have this principal rank. Principal means important. It's also a very important rank of pipes because it is where the organ's pitch is set. So we have this sound. And on the far right, near the bass pipes. And we must qualify this by saying that this organ isn't tuned yet. So the sounds are a little bit rough at the moment. We have a couple more stops here, very unusual ones. These are harmonics, Rausch, Quint. Now Quint means a fifth. So we're going to have a fifth sound plus an octave above that. So on its own, it sounds rather uninteresting. You would never use it on its own. You have to blend it. It's like having a recipe for a cake. You just don't have the sugar on its own. You need everything else with the eggs and the flour, and it all adds up to a nice batter. So. And the icing on the cake, so to speak, we're still talking about cakes. We have the Terz, which is a 17th harmonic, and that goes above. Oh, what's happening there? I'm actually using two keyboards at once, but through a very clever device. It's called a coupler, and how I had that work was simply to slide the top keyboard in as you would do in a harpsichord and I'm joining the top division to the lower one so it's as if, as if I have four hands playing. So the organ is made up of two keyboards at the top and something else is happening down here. What's that? Well we have the pedals, it's like a third hand and we have special stops for those. We've got three here, sub bass, 
and it's got 16. Now, if you remember, eight means unison pitch. The pedal is an octave lower. And we have a, an octave above that. And a rather unusual one, a re dotsim. Again, you'd never use that on, your, on its own. It's actually, when you have a full chorus, you add that in there, it makes more sense. And how do you know, how do you learn about where your feet go? Right, if you come over this way, and you might put the camera above this way, can you see where my feet are? Yep. Now, it's a normal keyboard in the sense that you've got sharps there, you've got naturals. Now, anyone can learn to play these without difficulty, believe it or not. And if you're wondering how do you play and do other things at the same time, well, you don't look. You have a sense of touch here. I was taught by a teacher whose teacher was blind, and they were French, and there was actually a very large French school. And the wife of one of these organists said, well, when you eat, you don't look at your mouth in the mirror to know where your mouth is. It's a bit like playing the cello and knowing where the notes are on the cello. You don't actually look at it every single time you put your finger on a note. That's but right. it's also like typewriting. Yes, you touch type. When you learn to touch yes. type, which I'm slowly learning at the present moment because I need to, eventually it becomes muscle memory. Yes. And muscle memory is really good for your brain and it's good for your development and it actually helps... Um, long-term health and well-being apart from being really nice to hear. So what you're going to do is feel the twos and threes putting these together so you have no more than a fifth apart and the feet are guiding each other so if I draw out this stop here you'll see what I'm doing. If I was to find where D is well I know the two sharps are there I know the, the sharps are down there as well so C sharp and then there's the D sharp or E flat it's in between so I'm going here this took a while to show you, but after practice, it comes very natural. So how would I find, for example, G? Well, I'm not looking down there. I'm looking straight ahead because I'll be looking at my score. My feet fill the three. I can feel A flat there, G. If I want to find top D, I simply find up here. There's my two sharps. There's my D. So we're talking about being able to play an instrument and I suppose it's a bit like when you uh, run hurdles, you know how high the hurdle is and how high you need your legs to go. So I suppose it's a bit similar to that. How do you coordinate the two or three parts of yourself? Well, it's basically splitting your mind into three. It takes a lot of practice and it is feasible. So let's just do an example. I've got some sounds in the pedal, I've got an accompaniment, and I've got a vocal line. So. And you've heard that joke of an old lady asking the policeman, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? And he says, well, lady, you've got to practice. So we're talking about, you were saying about practicing. What were you saying about Bach? Bach, the, one of the greatest organists and composers ever, was answering someone's comment about gosh, how do you play the organ? He said, well, there's nothing to it. You simply play the right notes at the right time and the organ, the machine, will do the rest. This beautiful organ, which inscription says Magnificat Anima Mea Dominum, is being tuned at the moment. So hopefully we'll have a voice, a better voice, a next episode. And we hope that you enjoy this episode today.